Table 3 shows the input w and the output k for a linear function. Letter A. Fill in the missing values of the table. All right. So basically what we need to do here is we're given a table of values and we're told that it's linear, by the way, which is extremely important to help determine how to solve the problem. And we have to figure out these missing values. So the first thing is, what do you know about a linear function? Well, you know a linear function is defined as the, by the formula, right? Y is equal to mx plus b. And what truly defines it will be the slope and the y-intercept. Now, what is constant among a linear function? Well, both the b and the m, right, for a given function. So what I realize is that if the slope is constant and I can somehow figure out what the slope is by using this table, then I can probably find the missing a and b. All right. So what I'm going to do is first select one set of x values and one set of y values. So I noticed that, and you might say, well, where, where's x and y? Well, they told us the input w. You know the input is always x, right? So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this x for right now. Okay. And you know the output of a function is usually y, right? Instead of writing k, I'm going to write y here. At the end, I can go back and substitute. I just like to do that because right, we're used to working with x and y. And once you get like w and k, it's like, oh my goodness. So let's just convert it into x and y's. So basically here I have two points. This is one point and this will be another point. Okay. So what is the x and y coordinates of the first point there in yellow? Well, it would be if I were to write it in uh, ordered paired notation, it would be negative 10 comma 30. Right. And the other point would be 5.5 comma negative 26. Okay, great. So how do I take this information and find the slope? You know, it's just the slope formula, right? The slope is equal to, and I guess my voice is starting to crack. At least I'm hitting puberty at this age. Uh, slope is going to be equal to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So what do we need to do? Just plug it in. Now it depends on which one you call your first point. Let's say this one is number one. And which one you call your second point, let's say that's number two, right? This would be x2, and that would be y2. This would be x1, and that is y1. So let's just plug it in, right? So the y2 I define to be negative 26, and that's going to be minus now my y1 value of 30. All divided now by my uh, x2 value, which I define to be 5.5, right? Minus then a negative 10 which was my x1 value. So now what I can do is plug this into the calculator, right? You can do the math on the top, negative minus a negative, you basically add them together and keep the negative sign, right? So that's 56. That's gonna be then divided by, it's 5.5, excuse me, minus a negative 10, so minus minus becomes a positive, right? So it's really 5.5 plus 10, so that's 15.5. And then if you'd like, you can do the math here in the calculator find an actual value. So 56 divided by 15.5 is about 3.61. Let me just see what the fraction works out to be. Yeah, I'm just gonna use the decimal here, all right? So the, and don't forget the negative sign. So this is about negative 3.61, I'm gonna say, okay? 3.61, and that's the slope. Now this slope is constant no matter what, okay? So what that means now, I'll go back to the table, and let me just erase these two points. Now that means that if I know the slope, I can actually find now my a and b. I just have to be careful with what pairs I choose. For example, if I were to now set up my, let's, let's set up my slope formula again, okay? So watch, I'm gonna write it out. So the slope m is gonna be equal to, right, y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So if I know one pair, right? So here's the thing, hold on. If I know, here, I have an algebraic formula here. If I know all of the variables except for one of them, I could always solve for that missing variable, correct? And that's the whole driving force behind how to figure out most of these problems. You would, it's a very useful technique to know how to use the formulas and understand that if you know every one of the variables in there except for one of them, you can solve for that missing one using algebra. So that's the driving force behind my thought process here. I know the slope. Remember, the slope is constant for everything in this table. Why? Because they told me it's a linear function. So the slope here is m. I know what it is. I just found it. 
Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to, let's say I want to find A. Okay. So that means I'm going to use this particular set of points here. Now notice the unknown would be a Y value. So why don't I circle one of the Y's here, right? I'll, I'll, it doesn't matter. I'll circle that one. I don't know that one. All right. And what's important now is that you choose another point of which you know all of the values for. For example, choose this one. Right now, notice what you know. You will know this x value. So if I called the one in blue y2, then this would be x2. And then I will also know now the other x and the other y, right? So I'll know these pieces. So look, the only thing that's missing is this blue one I said, right? And look, if I know all of the pieces except for just one of them, I can solve. All right, that's the whole driving force here. So let's go back. Let's just get rid of that. And I'm just going to highlight simply now this column. All right. You wouldn't want to select now this point as well, because then you'd have two unknowns. You can't solve it. So notice we're going to have to basically do like a two-step process. All right. No, no big deal. So uh, why don't we now, let's see. Okay. So let's plug in the slope. Negative 3.61 is equal to, let's call this our second pair and this our first pair. So the y2 value was a, okay. The y1 value was 30. The x2 value was 67.5. And now the uh, x1 value is a negative 10. Be careful with that double negative again. So let's just try to simplify this a little bit. So this will be negative 3.61 will be equal to a minus 30 all divided by it's really 67.5 plus 10, right? So that's 77.5. Okay, let's cross multiply now. All right, so we're gonna take the negative 3.61 and then multiply that now by 77.5. And we get 280, right? Negative 280, and that's then going to equal A minus 30. Solving for A, we have to add the 30 on over, right? And look, lo and behold, what do we get, right? We're able to solve this where we'll see that A will equal 250. Okay, 250. Now you might say, well, how did you get that answer if I, when I plugged in 3.61, I got an answer that was like a decimal of that. Well, what I did was I actually plugged in the exact value of the 3.61, okay, which was 3.61290326, blah, 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 blah. All right, so when you do calculations like that, it's probably good to save the number in the calculator and use that then in your calculation. So now I figured out what A is, and what do you think we're going to do to find B now? The same process, right? Just, I'll choose now, let's go back to the table. I'll keep that first point, all right, I'll keep this as my uh, first set, and I'm now going to choose this as my second, okay? And let's just run through this. Actually, let me put that in blue. Let's just run through it. Ready? Slope formula. Slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The slope is negative 3.61. Remember, I'm going to use the exact value. When I calculate, the y2 value is negative 44, negative 44, minus the y1 value of 30, all divided then by the y2 value, uh, excuse me, the x2 value, which is b, minus then the y1 val uh, x1 value, sorry, which is negative 10, so just be careful with that double negative. And now we can just simplify this a little bit. Let's clean up the signs. So it's negative 3.61 is equal to negative, so negative 44 minus 30, right? We're essentially adding them together. So that's going to be a negative 74. And that's all now divided by essentially B plus 10. Okay, let's cross multiply now. So it's going to be negative 3.61 multiplied by B plus 10. And then it's just negative 74 times 1. So that's just negative 74. What we can now do is we can distribute, right? So we'll distribute. Okay, so this works out to be about negative 3.61 times B minus then 36.1. And that's going to be equal to negative 74. Let's add over this 36.1. Okay, on over. And now we're going to get basically negative 3.61B is equal to uh, when we add those two together, actually, you know what I'm going to do? Let me do the exact value now in the calculator, okay? So I'm going to take the uh, the negative 3.6129, blah, 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 blah. And I'm going to multiply that by 10. 
And then what I'm going to do is take then the negative 74 and add to that that exact value. So that it's now 37.87. So there's now 30. 37.87 and then we have to divide out now right since I'm running out of space well, I'll do it anyway so we have to divide out now the negative 3.61 remember I'm going to use the exact value there so we're going to get now b will be equal to let's see so we get that we're going to divide it by just going to go back get that exact value and what do we get we get a nice negative 10.48 okay 10.48 and then if you needed the exact number, let's see if this works out to be a fraction. Yeah, it's fi negative 587 over 56. Okay, so that, that's good enough, and this value should be negative. All right, and, oh, whoops, 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 nope, should be positive, sorry. When I wrote this number down, right, did I write the, I don't even know what I wrote here. What did I, what exactly did I write over there? Can you tell? Because I, I, I certainly can't. So, what was I, that should be, hold on one second, should be 37, yeah. That should be a negative there. Sorry, double negative, so it's going to be positive. Okay, so now that we found all that, let's move this A value on up here. Let's move this B value on up there as well. And our slope value too. All right. So what we realize now is we have also a part B. Right? Isn't this just dandy? We have also a part B. So let's just write this on out. How are you guys doing today? Hope you're having a good day. It's always a great day when you're doing math, right? Sure, 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 sure. All right. Hope everyone's also healthy, happy and healthy. Okay. So, uh, letter B now, it's telling us to, let's see, uh, find the linear function now. Okay, so what that means is we have to define then, remember what defines a linear function is going to be the slope and the y-intercept. So we know the slope already, right? So we got that. And now what we need to do is we need to now define then what the y-intercept is. So remember, here's an equation. You got four things. If you know three of them, you can solve the missing one. So if I want to solve for b, I have to know these three values. So what's easy is the slope, right? We know the slope. We can easily connect that. That's the slope. But what's the y and x? Well, y and x of a linear function here literally represents any point on the line, any of them. So what I can do here is I can choose any point I like. Now I wouldn't suggest, I, I would suggest you don't choose these two, one of these two, because let's just say there was a slight error, right? In either one of these, okay? If there was a slight error in one of those, and then you took that point and you plugged it in, well then this is gonna be wrong too. Okay, I would choose now a value uh, that you were given. All right, just a problem solving hint. Uh, so now, uh, or I should say a way to avoid uh, silly mistakes, right? Part of success in life is just avoiding the silly mistakes. So y here is going to be 30. We'll choose the first point, basically. All right, the slope is going to be negative 3.61. And then they wanted us to round to three decimal places. So what's, what was that exact value in three decimal places? Three point, hold on one second. I'm just going to scroll back. 3.613 or so. So I'm going to just plug in that little three. Times the x value there. The x value was negative 10. Okay. That was the x. And then plus now b. So I can solve this, right? We have one unknown. So this is going to be 30, right? Is equal to now positive 36.13. Okay, I guess if you were to then do three decimal places, it would be 29. I know this gets a little crazy, but we'll be fine. So here plus B. Subtract that value on over now to the left-hand side. And again, I'm going to use the exact value. Um, so it's really, it's, it, it'll really be, this is where it gets a little nuts. It'll really be 3.6129. Okay, 29 plus B. And then why? Well, because I, again, I'm I'm just I'm not writing the exact value out of, in terms of all the decimal places. Um, so now all we have to do is subtract this value on over to the left hand side, right? And then we'll get the slope. Excuse me, the y-intercept. And let's see what it is. So it's basically going to be. Let's scroll down. 
All right, so it's basically going to be 30 minus 36.129, and we get about negative, negative 6.129. Okay, fantastic. Now we have everything we need to write the linear equation. Y will equal the slope value of negative 3.613 plus uh, X minus then 6.129. All right, so that's basically what the answer should be. If it's off by a decimal point, I honestly wouldn't worry about it. It's just how you round throughout the problem, just as long as you're uh, in the ballpark. And now, this would be your answer here, right, if we could leave it in terms of y and x. However, though, don't forget that we defined y and x here to be w and k, right? This was y and this was my x. So now all you really have to do is just substitute out y and x in terms of now w and k. So the y value is really k, negative 3.613. The x value is really w and then minus the 6.129. All right. And that is that. So that would be the official answer. All right, guys. So listen, thanks for tuning in. I really do hope this video helped. If it did, help us out by subscribing. It's totally free to subscribe, and it really gives us a major hand. So that would be awesome if you could. And if you found this video helpful, maybe some of your friends that might be in the same class might also find it helpful. And even if not, right, we have a whole, we have thousands of videos out there. So um, there might be, uh, you know, something that we could actually help your friends with that aren't math related. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Take care.